Right, today we're going to look at uh, some energy calculation work. So work done, gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. We're going to start with work done, because it's the easiest of the lot. Uh, work done uh, is just force times distance moved in the direction of the force. Nice and simple. So sometimes you'll see that W equals Fx. Uh, work done, so measured in joules, force measured in newtons, and distance moved, measured in meters. Okay, uh, you're going to want to be able to rearrange that. So you're going to have force is work done over distance moved, and distance moved equals work done over force. Make sure you can rearrange it. Uh, things to watch out for. Uh, Sometimes you'll find that this might be in centimeters, so watch out for that. Sometimes you might find that this is in kilojoules, so watch out for that. Uh, but this is probably one of the easier equations that you're going to use. Um, also, sometimes you'll see uh, another variant of this equation, work done uh, equals energy transferred. Transferred, that's probably wrong. Um, and this just means that if I do, for example, 10 joules of work, I'm going to transfer 10 joules of energy. So if I push a block and do 10 joules of work on it, I've transferred 10 joules of energy to it. OK, uh, that's nice and simple. So we'll move on. Gravitational potential energy, or GPE, if you're feeling lazy. Uh, GPE equals MGH. Uh, one of the few equations where we've got three quantities on one side, that's not a problem. Uh, rearranging that, we're going to get GPE over mg, pH. Uh, we can do G equals GPE over mh, or m equals GPE over gh. Okay. Units we're looking for there, GPE again in joules. Mass in kilograms, gravitational field strength, uh, newtons per kilogram, and H would be in meters. Things to watch out for here would be um, sometimes it's not obvious what G is. Well, on Earth, G is 10 newtons per kilogram. You'll have to find that written at the front of the exam paper. Same again, you might see GP written in kilojoules, so make sure you convert that. Um, remember, in physics, with mass, we work in kilograms. So if you're given a mass in kilograms, you don't need to convert that. Otherwise, you're going to get a really big answer, which would be a problem. Um, so we've rearranged it, and we've used it. Remember, GPE is possessed by anything that can fall. So for example, you might uh, be standing on the ground and you might have a box on the ground and then you might use a weird hand thing to lift the box in the air with the rest of your body attached so we won't do that so <laughs> let's say you've got a box you've got uh, a box on the ground <laughs> got a box on the ground and then you use your telekinesis powers to lift the box in the air okay bear with me on this so you might lift it up two meters in the air then that's going to have gains in GPE because it's been lifted into the air. You have to do work to lift it into the air, um, but it's going to gain some GPE. And then obviously if you switch off your weird telekinesis powers, then it's just going to fall back down again. Okay. I'm going to look at that sort of interchange between energy types in a bit. But basically, gravitational potential is uh, possessed by anything that can fall. Okay. GPE was that one. This one is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, select pens is always helpful. 
kinetic energy is a half times mass times velocity squared. Uh, again, a slightly trickier equation because we've got that squared term in there. It's not the end of the world, um, but it is one of the tricky ones to rearrange. We look at the units first, so joules again, kilograms again, and meters per second. Okay. If we want to find the mass, the mass is reasonably easy to get through re rearranging. Um, we're just going to divide both sides by v squared. It's going to give us half m. And if we divide both sides by a half, we get kinetic energy over half v squared. Or if you prefer it, you could write that as 2 ke over v squared. Up to you, both should work. Now, the one people struggle with, and the one that crops up most frequently, is trying to get uh, V on its own. Um, and the trick there is to try and find V squared on its own first. So, in a similar way, we're going to say that V squared uh, equals Ke over a half M. So, we've just divided both sides by a half M. And then it's just a case of square rooting both sides. So, if we square root both sides, we get V equals square root of Ke over a half m and again if you prefer it you could just write square root 2ke all over m up to you we'll give you the same answer for some reason uh, probably because of the squared people often get this one mixed up or they've got to square root things at the end uh, but always go back check your equation it should always look like that to start with it's not worth trying to sort of memorize these rearrangements uh, it's just better to be able to rearrange them as you go. Uh, obviously, things that are heavier have more kinetic energy. Things that are moving faster have more kinetic energy. So, I said we'd look at the interchange of these energy types. So, we're going to first need an object. So, let's draw ourselves a person. The giant head for some reason. Uh, let's say that here we have a set of steps that's 20 meters high. I appreciate that's a slight problem because that means each step is 5 meters high, but I sort of worked out the numbers before drawing the picture, so we're just going to go with it. Um, our person is going to go from ground level to the top of the stairs. So they're going to go from ground level all the way up the stairs, stop at the top of the stairs. Okay, our person is reasonably small. They've got a mass of 50 kilograms. Uh, we're assuming it's on Earth, so G is 10 units per kilogram. And we've just said that we gain a height of 20 meters. So our GPE gained is equal to MGH. So the mass was 50 kilograms times 10 newtons per kilogram times 20 meters, which is going to give us 10,000. <laughs> Got to write down the answer. Joules. Okay, and that's nice and simple. Um, but let's uh, assume that our person is then going to jump off the edge uh, into a sort of pool of custard. It's custard, honest. Um, what's going to happen? Well, I said earlier that we were going to talk about the interchange of these energy types. At the top, we had loads of GPE. Okay, loads of GPE, but no kinetic energy because he wasn't moving. But as they fell, that GPE was getting transferred into kinetic energy. Okay. The closer they got to the ground, the faster they're going, the more kinetic energy they're going to have. And then until they hit the ground, obviously, well, custard, and then they lose all their kinetic energy. But all the way down, it's losing GPE and gaining kinetic energy. Okay. So if it's got 10,000 joules, of GPE at the top. Okay, so actually we can add the words lost 
GP lost goes to kinetic energy gained. So if it's got 10,000 joules at the top of GPE, at the bottom he's going to have 10,000 joules of kinetic energy. Why is that good? Well, it might not be good, but it might be useful in a question because it allows to work out how fast he's going. And we said earlier on that kinetic energy is half mv squared. Uh, check you can rearrange it to get v equals. Remember the trick is to get v squared on its own equals first. So pause there, write it down, try and work out the velocity. Good. So uh, we said that v equals the square root of 2ke over m. Uh, we said that the velocity is 10,000. Okay, so it's 2 times 10,000 divided by a mass which is 50, all square rooted. Okay. Gives you a speed of 20 meters per second. Okay. So, there, what we've done is we've gone from a person uh, gaining some GPE by walking up some steps. They might have already had some GPE, they might have been on a diving board or on a cliff or in a plane. Um, so, we know how much energy they have GPE wise, and then all of that energy gets turned to kinetic energy just before they get to the ground. What have we got to assume? Often the question will say, what assumptions have you made? Some people say, oh, they're on Earth, that's why G equals that. That's a terrible uh, assumption um, because they won't give you the marks for it. The better assumption is to assume that there is 100% uh, efficient falling, i.e. you've got no air resistance. Okay, If you've got air resistance, this is resistance, then some of the energy that you had as GPE will turn to thermal energy as you fall down, so you won't get the full speed at the bottom. But often, we'll just ignore the air resistance. So if the question says, uh, what assumptions have you made? You've assumed that there is no air resistance. Okay. So that's going from a kinetic energy, that's going from a gravitational potential energy, sorry, to a kinetic energy. Last one before you give up for the day. Uh, we could look at the opposite. So here we've got a watermelon in a cannon. Um, no expense spared. Uh, we know that the mass of the watermelon is 3 kilograms and the muzzle velocity is quite slow. It's just 30 meters per second. Okay, so not a very good cannon. And it's pointing straight up for convenience sake so we don't have to consider any sort of components of the velocity uh, and we want to know how high is it going to reach okay so again we work with what we've got we've got a mass we've got a velocity we can find out its kinetic energy can't we because kinetic energy is a half mv squared okay I realize I've got lots of space but I'm sort of cramming in the calculation so there watermelon flies into the air and gets to this highest point up here so kinetic energy is half mv squared, so it's a half times the mass we said was 3 kilograms times the velocity is 30 squared. I said earlier that the squared causes problems, that's because people sometimes forget to include it, so make sure you square it, and it gives us 1,350 joules. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, what assumptions are we going to make? Well, we're going to assume that there is no air resistance. And what that means is that the kinetic energy that it loses as it slows down as it goes up into the air is equal to the gravitational potential energy gained because it's getting higher and higher and higher. And essentially, at the top of its uh, flight, the watermelon will stop. So it'll have zero kinetic energy up here and maximum GPE. Okay. So we're saying that it gains 1,350 joules of GPE, which equals the mass, which is 3 kilograms, 
times g, we're assuming we're on Earth, because we always are, in these sorts of questions. Okay, sometimes we're on the moon, but they sort of tell you that. Times the height, whatever the height is. Okay, well that's what we're trying to find out. So to get height on its own, we would say h equals 13.50 divided by 3 times 10, which gives us, my pen's playing up, a grand total of 45 meters. Okay, so if you fire a watermelon at 30 meters per second from a cannon, uh, it'll reach 45 meters. So there we go. To summarize, you've got three equations you're gonna need. Work done equals force times distance, uh, GPE equals MGH, and kinetic energy equals half MB squared. In each of these, what happens is you plug in your numbers, you get out a value. Simple as that. And then often, if you lose one of them, so if we lose kinetic energy, it might get turned into some gained GPE. So that was the watermelon example. Or you might lose some GPE and gain some kinetic energy. So that's anything falling. The ones we didn't touch on were when you lose kinetic energy and you do work, essentially. So this example at the bottom um, is how brakes work. Okay, so a car might have, uh, it's a brick car, might have some kinetic energy and then it might stop where it's got zero kinetic energy it's got zero kinetic energy because the brakes have done some work. So there we would equate the half mv squared with the force times distance. So if you've got a braking distance question, they might say a braking force is applied. How long does it take the car to stop? Uh, then that's how you're going to solve it. But I've sort of run out of time for that. So if you've got a question about that, stick it in the comment section below. And that's it.